Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Collaboration Space. I'm your host, Nancy Lucier. And with us today is Charlie McCarroll, who is the Technical Director at Hudley. Good afternoon, Charlie. Good afternoon, Nancy. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Absolutely. And our topic today is how do we make meetings less boring? And I thought, Charlie, we could kick this off with, well, let's talk about why are they so boring? Why are we so tired of online meetings? No, it's it's an excellent question, right? So, um, yeah, we've been, you know, trying to do these meetings, you know, uh, virtually almost exclusively for a few years now. And one of the, the main things that we've found is that you you have various levels of, of boredom and, and tiredness that come with a lot of these uh, different meetings and, and, you know, what, what is it that makes you more tired in a meeting than the other? So, you know, when I, when I sort of ask this question to folks anecdotally, um, a lot of it comes down to uh, participation level, right. And, and, you know, how, how much, um, how much you contribute to the meeting, how much you're just sort of listening in. You know, I was talking to a colleague the other day and they were saying, you know, I was on these, I was just on back-to-back -back Zoom meetings and I'm so tired. I said, oh, well, were you, were you presenting? Did, the, did all that presenting make you tired? They're like, no, I said, I said two things in the entire two hours, but I was listening so intently for those two hours um, <laughs> that I just, you know, it just kind of wore me out when I was trying to wait for my, for my part to jump in. So, um, you know, there's a, a lot of different, um, you know, kind of theories behind this mm. sort of idea of Zoom fatigue. You know, I've heard everything from, well, you know, your body, um, you know, it, it thinks it, want, it wants to think that it's in a meeting space, but you're actually at home. So it's, you know, confusing to your mind and it makes you tired. I've heard that. And just staring um, at the screen could make you tired, right? We're exactly, not looking at a person in the, the room. Screen. We have to look at the screen. Exactly, exactly. And that's sort of where, you know, us at Hudley can kind of come in, right? I mean, you know, meetings are boring for any number of reasons, you know, content may be one of them. But one of the things that we can kind of help with as a, as a camera maker is, you know, how do we make that more visually appealing? How do you, you know, make it so that uh, I'm not just staring at the same, you know, speaker the whole time? How do I, you know, you know, look at, um, look at things a little bit differently and, and keep myself engaged more in a meeting? Yeah, you mentioned your friend was saying, oh, I said, two things in this meeting. You know, how do we get people more engaged? How do we make these meetings more inclusive? That's, yeah, that's an excellent question. So, you know, the way that, you know, we think at Hudley, uh, you can make a meeting more sort of visually appealing and therefore engaging. If it's more engaging, it's hopefully less boring at that point, right? But, um, you know, our thought is that, you know, looking at a static image, like you say, like we were talking about can be, um, you know, can be tiring, can be boring, but if we make it more visually appealing, right? Like I can sit and I can watch TV for two hours, right? And, and it, I'm not, you know, worn out and tired after that. So how do we make more of a, um, bring more of a, a cinematic aspect to, to meetings? How do I, how do I bring the, um, almost like a, a television, like um, multi-camera type, you know, um, you know, how do I get different angles, different, you know, frames, um, you know, can I see people in the room that are, are not talking as well as, as, as the yeah. person talking and, and keep sort of a lot of, uh, uh, you know, sort of variety uh, in the viewing angle. Yeah, a lot of times we're just getting those boxes with the Brady Bunch effect, right? I'm just looking at those same boxes all the time. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, and sometimes it's, it's just pages of that, right? And so like, which page do I go <laughs> yeah. to of the, of the yeah. you know, 20 people per screen, right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about, you know, you mentioned the cameras. Tell me a little bit more about the role cameras play in keeping meetings exciting. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, uh, you know, what we try to, you know, accomplish at, at Hudley is, you know, how do we bring the experience of sitting in a conference room uh, to a person that's, you know, sitting, you know, at their home. If I was, you know, if I was sitting in a conference room myself, the person speaking, I would probably be looking at them most of the time. But I would also be checking to see, you know, the, you know, nonverbal cues coming from my colleagues, right? I might glance to my right, look over and see, you know, how, how does that person reacting to what the main speaker is saying? Um, if there's, you know, you know, something happening in the room and we're all like, you know, looking at somebody coming in the door or something like shouldn't shouldn't we visually all, you know, shouldn't the camera sort of, you know, go go there as well. Right. Um, that's so really including the people on the far end, too. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, the more inclusive the experience, probably the less boring it's going to be. And the more you actually feel that you're participating in the meeting as opposed to just a, an external viewer. Hmm. Talk to me a little bit more about the technology behind that or the camera. How does the know? How does the camera know which way to turn? 
Yeah, no, that's that's an excellent question, right? So, you know, what we at Hudley refer to as sort of the AI director, you know, like having multiple cameras, multiple angles um, is not nothing new, right? Like that's that's we've been, you know, I I was a design engineer designing video conferencing systems for many years before any of this, and we, you know, we always had the you know the video conferencing you know panel with the you know camera presets, the you know select the camera, zoom, you know the the PTZ controls. Um, Maybe we got you know smart enough to link the audio system to the camera presets so that they you know kind of go automatically, um, or maybe you were lucky enough to have somebody in the room that was smart enough to work that panel every time and and would provide that sort of um, direction essentially. But you know what we want to do is is replace that person with what we call the AI director, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody who's you know directing the action, showing the speaker, but also showing the nonverbal participants, making sure that no action is lost in the room, and you know using you know, using, you know, artificial intelligence to sort of, you know, govern all that and, and to make, make the meeting um, uh, control free, but also, you know, that same level of appeal. Yeah. I like that. It's not set it and forget it. And this is my view, but I also, like you said, don't have to have that human person sitting there in my meeting. You know, I don't have that luxury. I don't have someone directing my meetings, but it sounds like this is a good, a good uh, substitute for that. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it's AI, right? So we make it better over time. Um, you know, things that we can do now, such as, you know, detecting the person speaking, detecting the nonverbal participants, making sure we're not covering anybody, um, you know, or making sure anybody that comes into the room is, is represented. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, moving forward, we look at things such as, um, you know, head movement, right? So if all of us in the room all turn a certain direction, shouldn't the camera know that we should, you know, turn that direction as well? Um, we, we kind of talk about it in terms of tracking in, uh, attention, right? Where, where should the attention belong in the room? You know, um, there's, you know, easy ways of telling that, but also, you know, more non uh, verbal, like facial cues and, you know, body language, things like that, that we want to, you know, that's sort of the, the cutting edge here where we can start mm -hmm. to figure out really where the attention does belong in the room. So it sounds like there's great things on the horizon for more AI at Hudley. You got it. Yeah, Perfect. no. So the vast majority of our engineers are, are AI machine learning engineers, and, and they are uh, very smart people that come up with things that are that are, you know, super, super interesting that I can't talk about at this time, but um, I'm really excited for where the future of where all this is going. Well, we will be on the lookout for that. Thank you so much for joining me today, Charlie, and for sharing all that great info. Thanks very much, Nancy. Glad to be here. Great. Well, and to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us once again in the collaboration space. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube at ABI SPL Info. And if you're like me and you like to listen to audio podcasts while you're driving, you can subscribe to the audio feed as well on your favorite podcast app. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. For more information, visit AVISPL.com.